wealth, fame, power. All of this and more can be obtained in the Great Pirate Era. I set out 100 days ago to leave my mark in this beautiful age of piracy. I said farewell to my sensei, although my training was far from complete. I gathered some basic materials and made sure I had some tools and food for the journey. I fought a forest bandit who claimed to be a swordsman, so I showed him my hippity hoppity sword style and defeated him easily. Afterwards, I collected some more food and wool. I made a sleeping bag and a furnace, both of which are essential. I also found some iron and met my first pirate trader. He had some interesting words for Sal, but I didn't have any berries to pay for them. A marine swordsman challenged me as well, but I was so out of his league. I got some food cooking, made myself a shield and slept the first night away. While drifting off I had this incredible dream about today's sponsor, Dragon City. Dragon City is an amazing free to play game available on Android, iOS and PC. You like dragons right? I mean who doesn't like dragons? In this game you can collect over a thousand different dragons and you can form your own dragon crew. You can breed dragons together to get new ones and feed them so they evolve into even cooler dragons. There are a bunch of different mini games to play and a brand new battle pass that lets you unlock new rewards and dragons daily. You can even get dragons of your favourite YouTubers as well, like Dream or Wisp. This month they partnered with Unspeakable to make his very own dragon. Maybe one day there'll be a Sen dragon. Can you imagine? That would be so cool. You can even battle it out with your dragons so you can prove that your crew is the strongest. If you haven't already, click the link in the description to download Dragon City and if you're a new player, you'll get 15,000 food, 30,000 gold and the scout dragon to help get you started. Thank you Dragon City so much for sponsoring this video, now let's continue with day 2. The bandit from before had a big friend and he hit really hard, but you know what they say, don't bring fists to a sword fight. Did they say that? Anyway, I found some more iron and continued to defeat the group of bandits. None of them could stop my hopping. I smelted the iron I collected and forged myself a brand new sword. I also upgraded my starter tools to iron and made some iron pants and boots. The bandits kept on coming and I swatted them like flies. Before finishing the second day, I found this weird house in the woods. I slept close by. On the third day, I checked it out. It was a pillager house and inside there was my first real treasure, an enchanted iron sword. I then hopped up another building close by and broke in. It had some gold hidden in its chest so I swiped it and took all of the hay bales as well. I met the residents of the house and they definitely had some skeletons in their closet. Ok, bad jokes aside, I also had another run in with some bandits, but this time the marines also got involved. I sailed over to the marines outpost in my fancy new longbow and I headed up to check if they had any loot. There were a lot of snipers up there so I formed a new plan. I climbed up the side of the outpost and I ambushed the marines. They had some good loot, some rum, some iron and some dials. I tasted the rum and then slept near the outpost. The fourth day started with a marine showdown. I'm having the time of my life defeating all these swordsmen. I checked the trial sensei gave me and I've almost completed it. I gathered some beef using my enchanted sword and found another one of those weird skeleton houses. I couldn't keep my paws off their treasure, so now I'm one golden apple richer. The next day I found another pillager base, this time vindicators stood in my way. They are way more scary than pillagers, but I defeated them and got some enchanted iron armor as a reward. This wouldn't be my only run in with pillagers today, because close by in a windmill I was ambushed by a bunch more. I defeated them all and plundered their treasure, which wasn't that good. Day 5 should really be called the pillager day because I found two more pillager bases. The marines tried to stop me from entering the first one, but by the end of the day I had cleared both bases and looted all of their iron. Day 6 I found my first waste stone. These things are magical. I then stopped in a nearby village and heard some rumours about a pirate hunter. Hmm, wonder if that will be important later on. It's probably better not to worry about that now, so instead I defeated some nearby pirates that were causing a scene. Did I tell you guys that I'm a mink? Well, that means I have lightning powers, like my Ellie Claw. Of course, when I pair it with my hippity hoppity sword style, I'm an unstoppable force. After defeating a bunch of marines, I found another one of their outposts, and this one had some cool loot as well, like this axe style. Can't wait to use that on an enemy. One week in, and the bandits are still 
still trying to get revenge for what I did to them. Of course, they all fall to my blade. I robbed another pillager base and got myself an enchanted iron helmet. I tried sailing towards the ocean. One problem, I don't know where it is. Instead, I got stuck in some conflict between some marines and bandits. One of them went flying and I had a pretty tough fight against a brutish bandit. I had to use the axe dial to defeat him. I need way more training. Day 7 is a very important day. It's the day I got my first wanted poster. Dead or alive for 2000 berries. I look nothing like my picture though. Now that I'm a wanted bunny, bandits, pirates and marines will definitely want to challenge me even more. So it's time I show you my second mink technique. Electric missile. Impressive, right? A bit further on in my journey, I found this weird campsite. There are a bunch of skeletons and vindicators hanging around there. So I decided to leave it alone and instead I tried to save a fellow pirate from some marines. Unfortunately, he didn't make it. I tried asking some bandits for directions to the ocean, but they weren't interested in helping me. After defeating them, a stray bandit tried to steal my boat and I became best friends with a dog. On day nine, I made it, the ocean. I can't wait to set sail and find countless treasures. Before I set off on my voyage, I had to fight a bunch of marines, pirates, and bandits. My dog even wanted to help. What a good boy. Then it was time. I was out in the vast ocean ready to conquer the world. That's when a fighting fish destroyed my boat and tried to eat me. I hurried back to the shore and made myself a new shield. I got a wanted poster to add to my collection and then I defeated the fighting fish with a bow. Unfortunately, fighting fish really liked the taste of rabbit, so the ocean just got a lot scarier. In fact, I had to deal with some more fighting fish later on. Some good news though, I found Sensei's dojo. I definitely need to remember where it's located. Definitely shouldn't forget this. And I ended off the day by defeating some nearby bandits and marines. Day 10 was the day I raided my first pirate ship. I defeated the whole crew and got my hands on a marine sword and stole their berries. My life as a pirate was starting to take shape. I raided another pirate ship. This time I got myself a pirate cutlass, which looks very cool. I then used it to defeat the crew on board. The next ship I found was a big one. It was a marine battleship. I broke in and started taking out the marines. There were so many of them on board, so I lured some of them out and thinned out their ranks. I overheard one of them shouting, don't let him take the devil through. I got badly injured by an RPG wielding maniac, but I survived and in their treasury I found an iron loot box and some sake. I made a key and opened the loot box to find the love love fruit. I headed upstairs to the top deck and continued defeating the marines on board. It took until day 11 to fully clear out the marine battleship, but I did it. One bunny beat all those marines. Back on land, I decided to set up a campsite. I was carrying around way too much treasure and I wanted to make sure I had a place to store it all. I was still working on getting the tent up on day 12. It didn't come with any instructions, so I got a bit confused. That's when I saw a trader. I thought they might want to sell me a shiny sword, but apparently they only make deals with marines. I finished off my campsite by adding a nice fire and some greenery around, and I think this little base will work out perfectly for me right now. I made sure to add a waystone close by and then put up my wanted posters on a nearby tree. I'm now worth 4,500 berries after defeating that marine ship. I started off day 13 by collecting some food and then I found another one of those pillager campsites. This time I decided to fight the campers to improve my sword skills and then I pillaged their chests. I got a bunch of iron, an anvil, an enchanted iron sword and enchanted iron boots. Back at my camp I cooked the food I collected and slept under the stars. The next day I found a pillager ship close by. The pillagers had magic arrows that made me float. They nearly broke my legs by making me float too high. It was quite troublesome, but I managed to defeat the first bunch. Back on board the ship, I was surrounded by pillagers and skeletons. It took a little while, but I managed to beat them all and started looting their ship. I got some emeralds, lapis, and iron, which was very nice, and then I had another run-in with some pillagers, this time in one of those pillager bases. Their loot wasn't that good, but I did get some more iron. 
Day 15, the Marine tried to ambush me at my campsite, so I quickly showed him what happens when you mess with me. I also saw a bunch of fighting fish just waiting to eat me. I didn't have time to worry about this, however, because a pirate crew was close by. They were after my treasure. The brute put up a good fight, but he was no match for my mink skills. I headed out for a little adventure, found an abandoned house and looted it. It had some TNT, so I made sure to grab that. I then spent the rest of the day fighting Marines. I want to increase my bounty so my name will be known throughout the world. After fighting some bandits, I also unlocked the color of Observation Hacky. Using my Observation Hacky, I can sense life forms around me. I used my electric missile to mess up a bandit brute and then cross swords with anyone I could find as I continued on with my little adventure. Until I arrived at a rather strange floating town in the ocean. I slept close by. And then in the morning, I sliced up some fighting fish and then started pillaging the town. They had a bunch of great treasure, gold, ender pearls, golden apples, iron, and enchanted tools. The undead villagers, however, did end up chasing me out though. On day 18, I fought a bunch of bandits, some big, some small, and one that used armament hacky. That bandit almost left me for dead, but I managed to get away. While escaping, I found a skeleton spawner and got myself another golden apple. I collected some food because I was running low and then fought a pirate brute. Those maces are scary. A little later on, I found an incredible pillager base, but I wasn't ready to tackle it just yet. So I put down a waystone close by and I will be back in the future. For now, I carried on my travels and spotted a sky island. I grabbed a bunch of dirt while the sun was setting and got my hands on a new wanted poster. Look at that bounty now! The next morning, I carried on digging up dirt until I had enough to climb all the way up to the Sky Island. It was deserted, there was only a weather wizard up there. No loot to be found anywhere, so I decided to take some books from the local library. But the weather wizard wasn't too happy about that. So we dueled, and of course, I won. I arrived at a savannah during sunset. This is terrible for me because minks are weakened in hot climates. This made fighting marines really tiring. I need to be more careful with my travels. The savannah did have this cool looking statue though, so it was definitely worth the visit. Just outside the savannah I found a village. More people were mumbling about some pirate hunter. Apparently he's making quite the name for himself. I decided to brush up on my sword training, so I challenged a bunch of different opponents. Some marines, some bandits, and even some pirates. I kept at it until I eventually arrived at the ocean once again. On day 21 I was back out sailing, until some fighting fish ruined my day. After beating them I found an incredible underwater ravine. I travelled around a bit until I eventually found my first shipwreck. It had some iron, emeralds and my first buried treasure map. How do you read this thing? Hmm. I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually, but first I need to deal with these fighting fish. I am very lost. I should get a navigator because this is ridiculous. I asked some marines for directions, but apparently they aren't very helpful if you're a pirate. It doesn't matter though because I eventually found the island that the treasure is on. After a little bit of digging, I got my paws on my first diamond. It's so shiny. I used a waystone to travel back to my campsite and made sure to put up my wanted poster. I did some chores around camp and then headed back out to sea. I docked on a little island and fought the marines that were stationed there. The next day I found another underwater ravine and my first bit of sea stone. I then swam around for a bit and found myself some diamonds, getting richer every day. Back above the water, the island was infested with marines again, so I dealt with them. I found a shipwreck and got myself another diamond, some emeralds and a treasure map. It was also getting late, so I secured a nearby island and slept. I sailed around some more on day 24. I pillaged a pirate ship that had nothing interesting on board and then found where my treasure was located. More gold and emeralds to add to my treasury. I stole from some more pirates and got myself a cutlass and a mace. I used the mace to beat up a fighting fish that chased me and then I looted another sunken ship. I got a new treasure map and some more iron. I spent a little while until sunset looking for the treasure. It turns out that it was the treasure I'd already found. I'm 
a terrible pirate. Day 25, I fought some fish and then raided a pirate ship. Close by I found a village and a shipwreck. On board there were a bunch of goodies so I grabbed as much as I could. At the village, a marine and a pirate were causing a ruckus. I checked to make sure the villagers were okay and one of them told me to be careful. Apparently the pirate hunter Zorro has been seen around these parts. I'll worry about him later on. For now, I found a wooden loot box in some ocean ruins and then an iron loot box in a sunken ship. Yeah, this is my life on day 26, surrounded by fighting fish. Do you guys remember that I became best friends with a dog all those days ago? Well, I found him again. I then began Operation Get Doggo Back to Campsite Safely. Along the way, we were chased by fighting fish, stopped to loot a sunken ship, and then slept on a small island for the night. On day 27, I got the good boy to his new home, my campsite. I then opened up my loot boxes, I got the slow slow fruit, and the shadow shadow fruit. I then made myself a diamond pickaxe and headed back out to search for some obsidian. In an underwater ravine I mined some lapis, some obsidian, and some diamonds. Back at camp, some pests were snooping around my beach, so I quickly sliced them up. After that, I made an enchanting table. The next day, I got it all set up with bookshelves and got myself looting two on my cutlass. I then made and enchanted a diamond chest plate with protection free and a diamond helmet with protection free and unbreaking free. I then headed back out to sea to look for more treasure. I'm going to need a bunch if I want to make it to the Grand Line one day. I found an underwater ruin and got in a bit of a sticky situation. Luckily, I managed to survive and safely got my feet back on land. I'm worth 8,000 berries on day 29, which is very nice. I then decided to do a bit of underwater mining until day 30. I got a bunch of gold, lapis, and diamonds while down there. I also got extremely lost, if you can believe it. I surfaced near the village I found previously, so I decided to sleep there. On day 31, I found a pirate trader, and he had some cool swords for sale, but I didn't have enough berries. So I tried to beat as many marines as I could. I obviously swiped all of their berries as I beat them, but then two marines caught and killed the pirate trader. I avenged his death, but I will never get those swords. It's so sad. I carried on beating marines until I made it back to camp. I got my wanted posters on display, said hello to my dog, and then made some diamond leggings, boots, and a sword. The next morning, I made a diamond axe and then chased some pirates away that were looking to take over my campsite. I used another one of my mink abilities, Electrical Tempista, to scare one of them away. A bit later on I saved a pirate trader, unfortunately he didn't have anything interesting to offer. I spent a bit of the day beating up marines and pirates and then I got my hands on a new wanted poster. I'm worth 9,000 berries now, let's go! Day 32 is also an important day because it's the day I founded Sen Pirates Crew. You can join my crew by clicking that subscribe button. I wasted the whole of day 33. I wanted to get some animals back at camp, so I tried to boat back a cow and a sheep. It took me so long to make this happen, and I never do anything with these animals. I made a dock so I could have a place to anchor my ships and then made a small path up to the campsite. Okay, so day 34 also started off pretty poorly. I went back out looking for more treasure and I followed my map all the way to the treasure chest I had already found before. I decided to fight some marines to polish my sword skills and then collected some food so the day wasn't wasted. Day 35 I found some more buried treasure, the chest had some iron and emeralds up for grabs. I then stopped on land and fought a bunch of bandits and marines. I think I've fully explored this ocean now. During the night, I started collecting some food when I spotted a marine captain. I waited for the perfect opportunity to strike, and that's how I beat my first captain. To start day 36, I practiced the blade. There were so many opponents who wanted to challenge me and I defeated them all. I then spotted this huge tree and a colosseum. I checked out the tree first and at the very top there was a chest with a diamond hoe. I then headed towards the colosseum and spotted another marine captain on the way there. This time I faced off against the captain fair and square. My hippity hoppity sword style destroyed him. The Colosseum was crawling with skeletons, so I led them outside and swiftly cut them down. Back inside the center of the Colosseum, I got attacked by phantom riding villains. They had those floating arrows again, which is always troublesome. I started off day 37 by getting some breakfast and clobbering some marines. 
I also stumbled across a boxing ring and a brawler master. He insulted swordsmen, so I challenged him to a duel. He didn't stand a chance. Close by to his boxing ring, there were these strange towers. I broke into one of the towers and started climbing it, defeating the habitants of each floor. It got more and more dangerous to the point where I had to run away. On the top floor, I met one of my senseis. He warned me that a strong green-haired swordsman was on his way to find me. You cannot back down, he said. And then he just vanished. Sensei was right. I couldn't back down. I fought some more in the tower, collected the totem of undying and then continued on my adventure. The next day, I made sure to challenge anyone I met. I need to be ready in case that swordsman finds me. I then made myself a nature's compass, which I used to locate the nearest ocean. I was back out at the sea looking for any treasure I could find. I got a buried treasure map, some iron, lapis, and a wooden loot box. On day 39, I found a fortune in a buried treasure chest. Diamond, emeralds, gold, and iron, all for me. It was a great day for treasure because I also found another wooden loot box in the shipwreck. Following my map, I paddled around looking for some more buried treasure. I dug around until sunset and found the chest with my riches. During the night, I headed towards a marine battleship and snuck on board. There were a lot of marines in there, so I led a couple of them out and after smacking them around with my sword, I decided to get some sleep. When I woke up, I used my color of observation hacky to safely sneak on board. I quickly ran through the ship, defeating anyone who stood in my way. My swordsmanship was getting better and better. Up on the top deck, I carried on facing off against the marines. Somehow the ship got set on fire, so I had to quickly defeat them before I burned to a crisp. I left that battleship with no loot. They had nothing worth stealing so instead I went out looking for more buried treasure. This treasure had some marines and fighting fish guarding it. It's gotta be good treasure. But after a lot of digging, I just couldn't find it. I gave up on day 41 and headed to another marine battleship. Same as last time, I snuck on board and caused some havoc. My rampage was clearly too strong because this time a marine captain stood in my way. I managed to defeat him quite easily and after cutting through a few more of his men, I decided to take a nap. When I awoke from my slumber, I continued what I started. I swiftly dispatched the marines and climbed up the crow's nest to check my surroundings. I headed to the ship that I spotted from above and grabbed all of its gold and iron. I pillaged the pirate ship for some berries and then swam into an underwater ravine to mine some diamonds. You might be wondering, what am I looking for out at sea? Isn't it obvious? I want more devil fruits and all of that wonderful treasure. What I don't want is to keep dealing with these stubborn fish. Well, I may have just found a solution to the fish problem, a gun. On day 44, I found out that I'm now worth 13,000 berries. How wonderful. I found another treasure island and destroyed the marines that guarded it. The treasure wasn't that good, but treasure is treasure, so I took it anyway. I looted a few more chests underwater and got into countless fights with those pesky fish. The next day, I busted my way into another marine battleship. I started annihilating the crew on board when a green-haired swordsman appeared. Maybe this captain is the man my sensei warned me about. He was ruthless, he even took down one of his own men. But he was no match for my incredible swordsmanship. I get the feeling he wasn't the one sensei mentioned. I made sure to finish clearing out the ship, reducing the marine numbers with every slice. After my successful raid, I docked at a nearby island and tried my hand at shooting. I can now make those fish pay. The marines are clearly upset with me because they sent in reinforcements. I stormed inside their ship and defeated their captain. They were guarding a wooden loot box, so I made sure to quickly yoink it. I then carried on hunting the marines on board. My bounty is way too low for how strong I am. The second chest had a bunch of bullets for me to take, so now those fishes are going to have to watch their backs or fins, or whatever they have to watch. I think the fish must have overheard me, because when I tried to leave, they broke my ship. Not once, but twice. I pew-pewed my way to victory and headed to a nearby island to dock my ship. I started unlocking all the loot boxes and got the horm horm fruit, another shadow shadow fruit, and the human human fruit. 
I used a waystone to head back to camp, put up all of my wanted posters, enchanted my diamond sword with sharpness 3, made a diamond chest plate, diamond helmet, and then enchanted my diamond axe with efficiency 4 and silk touch. On day 47, I headed back to the village I found previously and liberated it from the marine's control. This is now under my control. I wanted to help the villagers out, so I gave this guy the Fletcher job and traded some sticks with him. I then spent the next few days trying to get a librarian villager with the sharpness 2 enchant. On day 48 I got a mending villager, which was very lucky. Occasionally I would get ambushed by marines as well, but let's be honest they never stood a chance. On day 50 I got a fortune 3 trade, which again, very nice. And I kept at this until day 52 when I eventually got a sharpness 1 trade this can work. So I bought two books and headed home. I put my wanted poster up and combined the sharpness one books to create the legendary sharpness two book. I added it to an iron sword and it was at this moment that I realized sensei might be bugged. I couldn't be 100% sure though. So I made another iron sword and started enchanting and disenchanting it until I got a sharpness two enchant. I didn't have enough experience to complete the enchant so it was time to get back to training. Oh, by the way, I'm also worth 15,000 berries now, so that's neat. Anyway, let's get back to training. I spent the rest of the day fighting pirates and marines. On day 53, I kept at it, destroying countless marines and pirates. I even had to fight another captain in this training montage. My experience was rolling in and I got enough levels to get the sharpness to enchant. Yep, Sensei has definitely gone senile. I need to find him and ask what's going on. Day 54, I found some underwater ruins close to my camp and they had a wooden loot box inside. That's a great start to the day, but you know what isn't a great start? Being stuck with my back against the wall because of some annoying fish. I'm not sure why, but the fish were really aggressive today. Maybe they know I'm looking for sensei. During the night, I got myself some food and slept on a nearby island. I'm almost worth 17,000 berries now. My name is reaching the wider world for sure. I found some more treasure in the shipwreck and then I made it back to the village that was floating in the ocean. I thought this was the way to Sensei's dojo, huh? I fought some pillagers on a ship and eventually decided to leave when they pummeled me with floating arrows. On day 56, I sailed around for a little bit confused. Where is Sensei? And then I ended up fighting a bunch of bandits back on land. I finished them off pretty quickly and found a nearby village that was being raided. I was hoping to find Sensei there, but I wasn't lucky this time. Instead, I found a few more angry marines. The next day, I found this huge obsidian spike in the desert. What does it mean? Maybe it's pointing at something, so I headed in the direction it was facing. I found a desert temple that had loads of gunpowder, so I took it all because I need it for my gun. I gathered some more food from a nearby swamp and then carried on my merry way until I hopped into a ravine. That was stupid. As the sun set, I found this huge desert village. In the morning, I decided to investigate. I climbed on the roof of one of the houses and instantly decided to leave. Yeah, that was scary. In the distance, I spot a marine outpost, so I head straight there to loot its goodies. Unfortunately, it's in the desert, so I am very weak here. I stole all of their gunpowder and then left. A little bit later, I found another outpost. This time, I defeated the marines and stole all of their gunpowder as well. It's very good for my gun after all. I spotted this awesome looking structure in the distance, but I was being followed by a captain. So I put him in a boat and clobbered him. I decided it was time to unleash a new mink technique, electrical lunar, on some marines who tried to fight me. I climbed up to the top of the cool structure and got a new wanted poster. They had some potions in their chests, which is fantastic loot. They also had a lot of gold, emeralds, and books. Before sleeping, I decided to check out the inside of the building. It was full of monsters. So I made my way back to the roof and slept. The next day, I tried again. I checked the loot down there, but it wasn't that good. So I ran and got swarmed by monsters. Eventually, I did make it out safely. Later in the day, I found a huge pirate ship out at sea. I pretended to be a crew member and looked around. The captain seemed a bit suspicious of me, so I left and carried on sailing. I got some more treasure from a shipwreck, and of course, I got another buried treasure map. The treasure was located on this suspicious 
suspiciously shaped island and I spent a long time looking for it. On day 60, I found the booty. It was a nice addition to my collection. I also got another wooden loot box from an underwater ruin. I got to watch a drowned practicing its dance moves and found another map in a sunken ship. I started digging up the treasure when a marine tried to sneak up on me. I quickly taught him a lesson and got back to searching. I eventually found the chest and it had diamonds and another loot box. What amazing luck. I found Sensei on this island as well. He told me that this time I'll be able to continue with his trials. To celebrate, I unlocked all of my loot boxes. I got the door door fruit, the calm calm fruit, and the cook cook fruit. I then spent the whole night training, trying to complete Sensei's trials. I hopped and sliced my way through numerous opponents. The next morning, Sensei acknowledged my hard work and taught me Yakodori. He told me the green haired swordsman also knew this technique. It's an incredible skill and so satisfying to use. I decided to carry on improving my swordsmanship by fighting pillagers in their camp. I found an enchanted book with the impact dial enchant which sounded very interesting. I then carried on completing sensei's trials. I slashed my way through many marines and during the night I hunted as many skeletons as I could. On day 62 I started off by getting some breakfast and then destroyed a fighting fish with my air slash. I feel empowered right now. I headed back out to sea and had to deal with more of those pesky fish. I did pillage a pirate ship as well and got myself a shiny new cutlass. I headed home using a waystone and got my wanted poster up on display. This tree looks amazing. I then made myself a gold chest so I could store all of my treasure. Yeah, that's right. I'm getting filthy rich. I think some pirates overheard me because they are on my beach again. I did a little bit of training in the nearby swamp and sent loads of things flying. The next day I teleported back to the vast ocean and got into so many fights with those annoying fish. I wish I had a cook in my crew that could roast all of these fish. I did some more looting today, got another cutlass, some berry pouches, lapis, emeralds, irons and a treasure map which I obviously failed to find. The treasure was really well hidden so I ended up passing on this loot. I took a short break from treasure hunting to fight some pirates and marines. I love this new sword technique, it really makes me feel like a master. I then got my hands on another buried treasure map and found the island it was hidden on. I dug around for a while and then a marine tried to steal my boat so I taught him a lesson you don't steal from pirates. The next morning I realized I could use my air slash to look for the treasure. I destroyed a lot of the beach and found the chest. Diamonds, emeralds, gold and iron. What a fantastic start to the day. I took a swim around an underwater ravine. I was hoping to find more diamonds but I didn't have any luck this time. I did however find another wooden loot box in a shipwreck which is fantastic. I found a pillager ship and bust my way in with my air slash. The pillagers had those levitating arrows again so I floated all the way up to the top deck. I managed to clear out most of the pillagers and got some diamonds as a reward. They did however have some reinforcements on board that almost killed me. The important thing is that I managed to get away. Day 65 I pillaged a few smaller pirate ships and the best loot I found were these swords. I did get on board a bigger pirate ship a bit later on and I got myself a transponder snail. I then fought the pirates on board to get in some much needed training. I got to use my air slash a lot and I even defeated my first pirate captain. I docked on a nearby island and had to deal with this annoying fighting fish. The next morning I forgot that I had mining fatigue and I placed down my transponder snail. Who knew picking up a snail could take so long? How ironic. I got a new wanted poster and I'm now worth 20,000 berries. I almost got eaten by a shark today which was pretty scary. And then I spent the rest of the day sailing around, looting sunken ships, pillaging pirates and killing fish. On day 67 I found a beaten up pirate ship. It was a mess. The crew said that a swordsman did this. I heard someone mutter the name Zorro. They tried attacking me for my treasure but I made sure to finish what Zorro started. I then broke my way onto a marine battleship. There were a few marine captains on board so it was the perfect place to sharpen my sword skills. I breezed through the ship cutting down anyone who stood in my way. The treasure on board wasn't that interesting but the real treasure 
was that I left a little bit stronger. I spent a lot of day 68 sailing around, looting ships and fighting fish, but that's not everything that happened. I also got my hands on another loot box, defeated a lot of marines and now I've got the spring spring fruit. Day 69, I used this glorious day to get stronger. I fought bandits in the morning and then hopped from island to island fighting anyone who was there. I beat a bunch of pirates and marines. My swordsmanship is almost ready for Zorro. The next morning, I found another loot box. I opened it up to find the Kilo Kilo fruit. I almost lost my life on day 70 as well. I think the fighting fish overheard me bad mouthing them and they almost devoured me whole. My totem saved my life and I made sure the fish no longer had theirs. After this, I snuck on board a pirate ship and challenged its captain. He put up a pretty decent fight, but in the end, my swordsmanship was too powerful. Of course, after defeating the captain, the whole crew then wanted to fight me. So I quickly showed them the difference in our power. After leaving the pirate ship, I docked on a nearby island. I fought some marines who were trying to arrest me and then slept at a nearby village. On day 71, the worst possible thing happened. They lowered my bounty. I sadly teleported back to camp and put up all of my wanted posters, even the lowered one. What a terrible start to the day. I put my transponder snail in my tent and then I ate the shadow shadow fruit. That's right, I'm now the ruler of shadows and I've got a bunch of new techniques I can use, like this Doppelman. It's my own shadow. I can even switch places with it. I can use Brick Bat to shoot down enemies and Spiky Shadow Lizard to attack enemies from below. Black Box also traps enemies, so defeating people became a lot easier with the powers of my Devil Fruit. It was so much fun that I spent the rest of the day playing with my new powers. In the morning, I went on a bit of a rampage. The shadow powers really made my fights even easier. I did, however, have my first run in with water. Devil fruits are great until you need to swim. Luckily, I used the well-known technique of placing a door down to escape my watery tomb. I liberated a village from a band of pirates and then raided some pillager buildings as I journeyed to find my sensei. By night time, I was back at the Colosseum. I made sure to clear out all of the monsters inside and even shot down the phantoms that were flying around. On day 73, I carried on my journey. The search for Sensei would be a long and dangerous adventure. I jolt anyone and everyone along my path until I eventually arrived at a haunted house. I made my way up the tower defeating skeletons and spiders until I got to a floor filled with witches. They managed to get me very low, which is something I would make them regret. Before that though, I made sure to steal all of their diamonds. As the ruler of shadows, I made sure to use all of my devil fruits powers to defeat as many witches as I could. There were a bunch of cave spiders as well that kept biting me. I felt my life flash before my eyes again, but in the end, I managed to clear the tower and stole anything of value. I left the tower in the most stylish of fashions. I woke up to a bandit watching me sleep, which is pretty weird. I fought a pretty strong marine captain. I used my shadow powers to decimate his crew and then I made sure to finish him off as well. I got a bit hungry so I stopped to get some food. I defeated a bunch of marines as I traveled far and wide. I even found one of those marine outposts so I quickly liberated it. I ended up drinking too much rum and the outpost started dancing. After sobering up, I carried on fighting marines, pirates and anyone else who was close by to the outpost. On day 75, I found a medic's tent. The doctor told me that he had recently treated a green-haired swordsman. Zorro could be close by. I headed out to look for him and instead I found another haunted house. I looted this one quickly, almost died due to poison and then I saw this huge temple. I made it up to the temple as the sun was setting and I stayed in there until day 76. It was crawling with monsters and lots of nice treasure. They even had golden carrots, which of course is my favorite food as a bunny. The higher up the tower I got, the stranger the creatures were. They were grotesque, but I didn't let them scare me away from all the glorious loot. I eventually decided that I would start climbing up from the outside. When I reached the top, I was rewarded with so much good loot. Diamonds, emeralds, diamond armor, Everything I could possibly want was at the top of this temple. 
day 77, I teleported back to my campsite and made myself a diamond chest plate. I enchanted it with Unbreaking 3 and then enchanted a pair of diamond leggings with Protection 4. Some marines and pirates were fighting on my beach, so I quickly showed them both who's boss. After that, I headed out to look for Sensei. I got into a duel with Marine Captain and finished my day off by collecting a bunch of meat. The next morning started off terribly. A Marine Captain came to hunt me down, but he spotted a pirate trader and decided he would focus on killing him instead. I tried to stop him, but the Marine Captain beat the trader. I was furious. I could have bought myself a new shiny sword. I took my anger out on all of the marines. I hope this will teach them a valuable lesson. Later on in the day, I found Sensei and he finally taught me one sword style, sword draw, lion's song. That's a really long name. Sensei gave me a new trial. He wanted me to use the techniques he previously taught me to defeat opponents. So I got straight to it. By the way, I'm worth 26,000 berries now. Let's go. One sword style, sword draw, lion's song song is really fun to use. I'm glad Sensei taught me this incredible skill. I decided to put Sensei in a boat because I didn't want him to go anywhere while I was training. I trained tirelessly until the sun had set and nighttime was upon us. I went back to show Sensei the fruits of my training but he was nowhere to be found. He vanished again. On day 79, I carried on with my training using my lying song technique as much as possible. It's really fun to fly around like this and super satisfying to cut through my opponents like butter. Later on, I stumbled upon the incredible pillager structure I found many, many days ago. However, this time I was ready to tackle it. I lured a bunch of pillagers outside and used my shadow powers to beat them all. I then pillaged the building. They had diamonds, gold, diamonds, and armor, a, a bunch more pillagers for me to defeat, and an enchanted golden apple. I had the best time clearing out this dungeon. The pillagers weren't hard to beat, but there were so many of them. The loot was pretty great. I got to fight some weird magic pillagers, which were pretty special. I even got my hands on another totem of undying, which is always good. I spent the whole night in this dungeon, making sure to completely clear it out. I spent the whole of day 80 roaming around looking for Sensei. I should have put a lead on him or something. I of course got into many fights and without a doubt, I won them all. Day 81 is a very good day. I cleared out this pillager building and I then made myself some scissors. These will help me use the full power of my devil fruit. I can now collect the shadows of anyone I cut with my scissors. So I collected a bunch of shadows. I then tried out my ultimate move, Shadows Asgard. I powered myself up by absorbing the shadows I've collected. It made clearing this haunted tower that much easier. I stormed through it and even found an evoker at the top. He was quickly sent down to his grave. I spent the whole of day 82 hunting marines. I wanted all of their shadows to help me increase my overall power. Collecting shadows is great fun because a shadowless being burns in the sun. By the end of the day, I had almost 60 shadows, which is pretty good. On day 83, I was trying to jump jump over a big gap, but I sneezed mid-air and fell into some water. Luckily, I had some doors ready to save myself. Being a Devil Fruit user is really scary. A bit later on, I found a Brawler Master. I asked him if he knew where my Sensei was, but unfortunately, he didn't. I then spent some more time dueling Marines when I found a village that was overrun with pirates and bandits. I made sure to help the villagers out and took care of their infestation. The next day, I carried on pushing the pirates back. We ended up in a swamp and for some reason, I was feeling brave, so I did some parkour across these lily pads. Why did I do that? I carried onwards, fighting and consuming shadows. This power-up has really opened my eyes to my true potential. On day 85, I found an evoker that was being escorted by some marines, so I quickly chopped him up. I spent the rest of the day traveling around looking for Sensei. I asked a bunch of bandits, pirates, and marines if they've seen him. None of them answered me, though. I'm not sure why. One marine captain did say he's recently seen seen the pirate hunter Zoro, but no sign of Sensei. After I defeated the captain, I got my next bounty. I'm now worth 31,000 berries. I spent the whole night fighting marines near a little forest. This will be an important place, so don't forget it. Day 86, I went down into a mine shaft. I found some chests lying around and there was actually a diamond and a golden apple down there. 
I didn't stay down there long, however, because Sensei definitely won't be underground. I found a few bandits along the way and eventually ended up at my village. I've done a huge circle around the ocean. I teleported back to my camp and put up my wanted posters. I enchanted my scissors with sharpness 4, then I headed back to the village and bought a mending book. I added it to my scissors and now they're looking pretty perfect. The village was overrun with monsters, so I tried to protect the villagers. Unfortunately, a baby zombie managed to infect my villagers so I spent the whole night taking my grief out on anyone who stood in my way. Those poor villagers didn't deserve to die. During sunrise, I found another one of those infested temples. I had no desire to raid it though, so I went back to my village and headed back to camp. I enchanted my diamond boots with double jump one and combined them with another pair. I can now hop around and perform the hippity hoppity sword style better. I wanted to test it out, so I headed back to the village. Maybe Sensei heard about the unfortunate events here and would also come to pay his respects. I couldn't find him, so I spent the rest of the day and the whole night training. The next few days, I carried on traveling. I couldn't find my sensei or Zoro, but they have to be close by. For now, I just made sure to work on my swordsmanship, and eventually, I'll find them. On day 90, I ended up in a jungle. It's hard to navigate through all of these trees, so I tried going around, and that's when I fell into the ocean. I managed to escape my certain doom with my trusty doors. Eventually, I decided I wanted to head back home, feeling defeated, but I didn't give up. I went back out into the wide world and after wandering around for the whole night, I found Sensei's Dojo. Sensei taught me 36 pound Phoenix, which is a wonderful addition to my arsenal. I stayed out all night and into the morning working on Sensei's new trial. It didn't take too long and Sensei agreed to teach me Dragon Twister. I was excited to use all of my techniques together, so I practiced against marines and pirates. I saw a haunted ship was docked close by, so I broke my way in and fought the skeletons on board. I stole some diamonds from them and on day 92 I made sure to finish off the rest of the undead crew. I also think Sensei is going senile. He gave me a trial without finished instructions. I tried to use all of my techniques, defeated loads of marines, pirates and bandits. I spent the whole night trying to figure out what Sensei wanted me to do. Maybe the answer is elsewhere I thought, so I I headed back out into the world. I arrived at a swamp and found a strange site. It was some kind of abandoned building. Inside, I found it was some kind of laboratory. They were performing some suspicious experiments and some of the creatures they made were left behind. I couldn't leave this place intact. It was too dangerous. So using my sword techniques, I destroyed all of their experiments. Upstairs, I found the most disturbing part of this lab. One of their experiments had escaped. It could be anywhere. Anywhere. This world is full of more mystery than I realized. I need to be prepared for anything. So it's time to master the blade. On day 94, I headed back to the little forest that I said was important. This will be my training grounds for the foreseeable future. I practiced my color of observation hacky, all of my sword techniques, and I attempted to become a master of the blade. On day 95, I learned that overusing hacky is dangerous. It made me feel extremely weak and slightly sick. After a while I was back on my feet and continued my rampage. I'm not joking when I say that I spent every waking moment fighting. I defeated mountains of people. On day 97 I heard some bandits saying they saw Zorro close by. Soon it will be time for our showdown. During the night my bounty got updated and I'm now worth 51,000 berries. My name is starting to spread throughout the world. On day 98 I wanted to talk to Sensei so I went back to his dojo but he was gone. Sensei is a master of disappearing. I headed back to my camp for the last time and put up my wanted posters. I'm proud of everything I've accomplished during my journey. During the night, I headed back to my training grounds. The woods are almost completely gone because of my insane swordsmanship. Day 99, we're almost there. You can guess what I did, right? I sliced up a bunch of no good people and my bounty increased again. I'm now worth 55,000 berries. Now seems like a perfect time to remind you all about today's sponsor, Dragon City. While I run around training, make sure you download the game using my link in the description and make sure you train your dragons just as hard as I trained during this video. 
I had one last chance to buy a good sword, but a marine captain ruined that plan once again. So I ruined that marine captain, an eye for an eye. I beat up a bunch more people and got ready for my final day because Zorro was bound to show himself. Day 100, I finally found him. I challenged him to a duel and his free sword style was ferocious. He destroyed my armor and kept me on my toes. He had a special technique I'd never seen before. He called it Onigiri. I pummeled him with my sword techniques and he showed me the difference in our power. The battle raged on until we were both slightly worn out. The next attack would determine the victor. Free sword style, secret move, 3000 worlds. I was utterly defeated by Zoro. I never want to lose to anyone ever again.